Hello, my name is Ken Small and I'm an architect in Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, today I'm going to uh, do a series of videos based on the installation of a solar system in my house. The house is 45 years old, so it was built in the 1970s. Today is the day we got our certificate of occupancy or our final certificate of electrical uh, inspection for the solar system installation on the house. It's December 28th, 2016. The process that uh, it took to get here has been about six months long and um, it's been a few ups and downs but generally it went smoothly and particularly during the construction process it went very smoothly but that's because we did a lot of groundwork and advance work to make sure that everything came out okay. The system where we installed was a uh, solar edge system which uses um, individual optimizers on each panel of which there are 22 320 watt panels. So um, the design of the system is something we'll go into more detail later but I just wanted to show you the completed end project at the beginning so that you could see where we were going. Um, there are a few little things lacking in what's up there now and one of them is we're going to remove the um, a satellite dish that's casting a shadow on it and then there's a little bit of drywall patching that still has to be uh, taped and floated but overall the whole project is done and uh, we're now getting electricity from it so it's been a pretty good experience and I recommend the system um, your situation will probably be different than mine but I um, looked at a lot of videos on YouTube to see uh, what other people were doing and I didn't find anything like this so we decided to make a video. If you like these please click like and like us on YouTube. Go to our website SSA Architecture and um, give that a like also from your Facebook page or come to SSA Architecture on uh, my Facebook page and uh, take a look at the information and the videos that we have there. Thanks a lot and I hope you enjoy the series. So this is the installed uh, solar edge inverter panel and uh, sub panel that we're working off of here and I'll just tell you a little bit about it. Um, the one main reason why I picked the solar edge system is because the individual optimizers allow you to um, not lose a lot of power when one of your panels is under a shadow. We do have a tree in the front yard that casts a shadow, although it's narrow. It goes across the panels throughout the day as it's a palm tree. Um, it also would allow me to put panels on the east and the west of the house and combine those with the panels that are facing southwest. So the house itself only had one uh, roof area that was relatively ideally oriented for solar energy and that roof panel is the one directly above the garage. It was just big enough for 22 panels and um, so um, we decided to go for a peak shaving system which means it's not designed to fulfill all our electric needs it's just to take off the greatest amount of electricity cost um, per unit. Um, if you don't understand how electricity is sold it's basically the opposite of how they sell bottles of water. So say bottles of water are 50 cents or three for a dollar. Uh, the way electricity works is they sell you the first one for 50 cents, the second one for a dollar, and the third one for two dollars. So that's because their cost of generating the highest utilization, uh, the highest amount of energy use for the public is the most cost. So if you buy another unit, you're going to be paying quite a bit more. Obviously, bottles of water and energy are just an analogy, but it gives you an idea that if you can save that last bottle of water that costs $2, your return on investment is going to be much better than when you're down trying to save uh, the last little bit of electricity to get off-grid. That's where it's least cost-effective unless your electric utility is charging a huge premium for being a uh, solar user. Um, here we're using Envy Energy and they do have uh, an impact fee basically to discourage you from using solar energy. Um, it's a monthly fee so uh, depending on how the whole thing pencils if you were living in your house all day long instead of being gone to work most of the time like most people are 
there may be some utility in, in doing that. But um, we're in the city here. We're not in an area where we're prone to power outages a lot, so we weren't really looking at that. Um, the house is 4,200 square feet, and most of it was built in the 70s. So there's been a series of additions with the most recent one just two years ago, but our electric bills are very high. So we've seen a peak electric bill of uh, 650 during the hottest day of the summer. Uh, anyway, so looking at the inverter panel here, um, this is a solar edge system. Um, this is an on-off disconnect for the DC energy coming in. And then this is the on-off for the operation of the inverter. And then this button here, uh, right there, controls this little LCD display that shows how much energy is coming from the grid, from the solar system, and so on. And uh, so we'll go into the details of that a little bit more. But this is a pretty user-friendly system because um, it's connected through a CAT6 wire here to our home network and out to the internet and then you can monitor what the system is doing panel by panel from the Solar Edge website. So that was attractive to us. Um, this electric panel here um, was an existing uh, sub-panel to the house. This isn't the main panel to the house. The main panel to the house is on the outside of the house on the opposite of, side of this wall and this panel was installed when we bought our electric vehicle because the main panel was full of breakers. So um, right here we have a pair of 100 amp breakers that are uh, for the car charger which actually only draws 80 amps and here we have a pair of 20 amp breakers that are coming from the solar system into our panel to provide electricity for either the house or the grid. And then these others are just general use breakers that were taken off the main panel when the sub-panel was installed. So um, master bedroom, kitchen, so on. Uh, the main panel is a 200 amp panel and this one is a 100 amp panel. And uh, then this thing down here is a lightning arrester and um, then we just have a conduit that runs from one to the other. Um, inside here is a rather simple connecting system for interconnecting all the wires coming from here and going into there. Um, I'll go into that a little bit more later on also. So um, as you can see we had to take some shelves down off the uh, garage wall and um, so I haven't decided um, what I'm going to do to replace um, the shelves, we kept them when we took them down, but some of the areas where the solar inverter are and the electric box are, we're going to have to work around those areas because we can't go too close. And then we made a bunch of holes in the wall while we were fishing wires down from the attic, so I'm still in the process of patching those. Um, the system should run between um, uh, 5 and 6K altogether. Um, we have a 4 and 12 roof pitch, and we're not ideally oriented towards the sun. We're slightly west of uh, south, and um, so we'll just have to see uh, what kind of energy we get out of the system. Also, the palm tree that's uh, shading the system sometimes during the day uh, will take away a little bit of the efficiency. But um, overall, uh, so far, it's been running as a test system for a few days uh, on and off while we're testing it and it's done pretty well so um, I'll probably do a follow-up a year from now and talk about how the econ economics of this came out and um, how long the actual payback will be projected to be at that time. As of right now we think it's going to pay back in about five years and therefore within ten years if electricity doesn't go up, which seems unlikely, we'll have double our money back.